Hi guys. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be a live video on Facebook and I will upload it later to YouTube for you guys. And uh, I just noticed we're uh, public. That'll be interesting. We'll keep an eye on that. I may or may not be able to see comments. Last time I was recording one of these videos, I could not see the comments you guys left until afterwards. So I apologize in advance if Facebook is all and I can't respond to comments until after the fact. Oh, no, I saw Nina's comment. Good morning. Good morning to you. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. How are you? I was going to wear my new wig today. And then um, basically my hair decided to, to look fabulous. And I was like, damn it. Okay. No wig. We'll look fabulous just as we are. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> But I did want to talk to you guys today about pain into empowerment, kind of like rebuilding the self after you've been through some shiz as basically this is what I'm going through. This is uh, where I am. This is the path that I'm on. And I've had a really interesting time with regards to healing and what that healing has meant and what that healing has looked like. And it continues to look like I'm by no means at the end of my journey of of going through all of this uh difficulty so i thought i would talk to you guys about like this journey and some of the things that have been really helpful for me in terms of re-empowering the self empowering the self when people are coming at you to try and make you feel like you're this big and you're like no we are this big like that that's what you do that's it the end of video no, no. <laughs> you just need to shout although shouting might help uh but i really wanted to talk to you guys about it because it's been a really interesting healing shadow worky kind of journey so i thought i'd share that with you guys so that was a very roundabout title with lots of yelling welcome <laughs> firstly i think the thing that has really helped me is to give yourself permission to feel all of the things which sounds fairly obvious but when i came out of a place of feeling disenfranchised disempowered embarrassed humiliated and i, I honestly the overriding thing is i just felt stupid when i came out of the situation that i came out of because i was i was like you were you're smarter than this you know, that that little negative self voice. And to be honest, I knew. I knew. Hi, Sterling. I haven't seen you for ages. Hi. Um, I knew that I was being cheated on. I knew that I was being lied to. I knew I was being stolen from. You know, you know, but you don't want to believe it. And I think that's the case with a lot of us, that we try and ignore our intuition. We try and ignore our gut. We try and ignore the things that we know to be true, even in the face of evidence of knowing these things to be true because we don't want to believe it uh, and then we come out of the the really awful situations and we're like we feel stupid we feel like we should have known better that was the overriding thing that i felt you know embarrassed um and it didn't help that lovely individuals um basically told me that if i'd have been a real witch then my intuition would have picked up on this way back when and um i would have known uh and i was like wow okay there is so much wrong with that statement i can't even put it into words right so we all fall in love with people right we fall in sometimes we fall in love with the wrong person um and we're human we have these experiences we get caught up we make mistakes if you like we get blinded by things and then we get stuck sometimes um especially if you're like me i don't have any family to fall back on and it is much easier if you have like a home where you can escape to when things just go awry i don't have that um and that's actually been brought up as a point of weakness about me um <laughs> i was like are you kidding it's a point of strength to be able to get through these things even though we don't have uh, a, a safe place to go back to. So, you know, overcoming it can be harder, but more worthwhile. And so to me, something that really came out of this was the realization 
that you don't owe anybody your emotional responses. I say again, you don't owe anybody your emotional responses and you don't owe anybody an explanation um, for your emotional responses, unless your emotional responses are between key individuals in a relationship and you're harming someone. But when you're coming out of um, a situation which is hard, a situation which hurts, um, you, you, you're not going to be, I don't know what this, this idea of like perfect witch behavior is with, with regards to coming out of a situation which is difficult and like, no, that's not what happens. And the idea that you've somehow failed as a spiritual person, failed as a witch because you failed to detect this person was a douchebag or whatever. Um, we all get taken in sometimes. And I think for me, I wanted to believe the person was better than they were. And it didn't take me very long to realize that was not the case, by the way. I had been fighting with myself and like how invested I had gotten into a, a situation for a while. Um, because I'm, again, I'm not stupid. I'm not blind. Um, and when I found out some of the things that I didn't know, I was horrified. Um, and the more I saw, the more horrified I became. And it just became an inevitability until um, I managed to get out, until everything blew up, um, and so on and so forth. But what I did learn from the current and ongoing healing experience is you don't owe people an explanation to how you need to heal. Because I've been very private with my healing, and I honestly feel like that was always going to be the case for me anyway, because I'm quite a private person, um, which probably should have clued me into that that was not the best way to go. Um, and honestly, this is my feeling about um, healing. Healing has to be true. True to who you are at any given point during the healing process, right? So I sometimes still feel certain emotions with regards to the situation. And I'm like now in the point of mind where I'm like, do I... Do I need to be feeling this brain, heart, body? And brain, heart, body is like, yeah, you do. You need to be feeling this until, you know, you've healed completely. Um, and so sometimes I still get irritated. Sometimes I still get angry. But nobody else gets that reaction but me. That's how I feel. And I look at that and I do this. We're doing a Virgo thing now. This is Virgo healing. You're welcome. I'm like, okay, this is my wound. This is my pain, right? It's a mess. And then we're going to turn it around and we're going to look at it. We're going to clean it out. We're going to cleanse it. We're going to be gentle with ourselves. We're going to forgive ourselves because I think self-forgiveness is a big thing in reclaiming power of the self because I felt um, at numerous points that I was being undermined. I was being flat out lied to. I was, ha I was being uh, humiliated and I was having my power taken away from me. I was drained basically. Um, and there were certain occasions where it was really freaking obvious to everybody, including me, um, where like my successes were like not mine anymore, things like that. And it, it really hurt. So when we're looking at this wound, I'm kind of like, okay, so where is the emotion coming from? And where is the pre-existing wound that was preyed upon, right? So the pre-existing wound that was preyed upon for me is definitely that I just didn't feel that I was good enough. And it's something I struggle with. Um, and it's kind of wanting to be loved is something that we all feel, right? But when you are, con you want to be loved, but you don't feel deserving of that love, that's a really easy freaking target for people who are manipulative um, because they can basically drive home, you're lucky to have me. Um, this is all in your head. Um, this is where you're. Now, the thing that was said to me, and this is it fun, but um, your mind does this because it's broken. Therefore, the fault is yours and I'm not culpable for my behavior. Right. And I was like, I'm looking back on it. You're like, OK, then. So how can we turn that wound, that that place of um, being told that we're not good enough in here and out there until we get rid of out there? Um into something for healing? How do we re-empower um, that uh, process of 
I don't know, basically dealing with not feeling like we're good enough. And honestly, I think it's piece by piece by piece by piece. And sometimes it's crying and letting it out and feeling it. And then what I did a lot of in the very beginning is I went super spiritual, super spiritual. I don't know what that was. I just went super spiritual. Um, I feel like I'm on an advert for something super spiritual super spiritual we're all getting cleansed um that's what it is um but i did i was in temple i was in ritual i was in the woods i was investigating new woods lots of them different ones different locations different spiritual locations meeting people who was um of a spiritual connection and getting to know myself in my freedom i was a big part of beginning to learn to, you know, value who I am um, and get back to a place of feeling re-empowered. Um, Sterling, I'm just gonna read Sterling's comments. Uh, some of us have gone through versions of it. You heal when you heal, sometimes it's quick, sometimes it seems like it's never gonna end. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't, I think it's okay for it to be both as well. I think it's okay for certain healing to feel quite quick quick and certain healing to take a little bit longer and I think you know you need what you need and basically heal on an individual basis but for me the, the spiritual side of things are going back into nature going to actual temple meeting with actual people being cleansed by priestesses yes I have been cleansed by real physical priestesses um a few times now um, I also had a massage yesterday. Um, it wasn't a very handsome man, unfortunately, but it was a very wonderful lady who also has a spiritual, um, a whole spirit. She's a priestess and, you know, so she did some spiritual stuff for me too. And so that was like the third or fourth time. Um, and that, that was kind of like a new experience. And so of giving myself, um, cause I, I just got paid. So I was like, okay, what do I need <laughs> in this moment? And um, I'd had a little residual body pain from the stress. This is something else that I can um, encourage you guys to realize. It's something Chris talks about um, quite a bit, really. Where is Chris? Usually when I start going live, she'll turn up, Chris, bing. Right, so we'll give her a minute. She'll probably, she'll probably hear me on the ether. Maybe not, she's not been very well. Um, that's what helped me to get out of mind chaotic this and that came from a bad relationship yeah um it's also things to help in terms of chaos versus order right i was being kept up all night and um, so i never got any sleep um and my sleep was all over the place chaos because of um that so getting into a regular uh, regular sleep routine i'm getting um into a regular food routine um, feeling that you're worth these things again, it's definitely a really great way of healing. Um, but something that really happened to me and it was really, really prominent was the physical manifestation of my stress. So I've mentioned before, like my hair is, uh, is, uh, loads healthier. Oh yeah. It's Thanksgiving over there. Mm. <laughs> um, my hair is loads healthier and my body is a lot healthier and my body was holding on to stress in a whole different ways. Um, um, like I mentioned my hair and like I was getting pains in like my hair um, and in my shoulder and in my neck and stuff. And I realized that I'd been so stressed for so long. Like my body was so, I was holding myself tense um and that i was constantly um closing myself down on many levels emotionally mentally spiritually just closed off because i was just bombarded with lie after lie after lie and it was like living what's the next thing what's the next thing what's the next thing and my whole body had become really physically tense and so releasing that has been part of helping me to heal since. So ma massage was one that I mentioned, um, about baths, lots and lots of baths. Um, I know people like that's the stereotypical self-love thing, but you can get really magical with it. So something that I did not expect, um, but has definitely happened is that, yeah, I carry it in my shoulders and back too. 
and neck um is the goddess danu came through from the celtic tradition and the celtic goddess danu is kind of like the all mother if you like um lady of rivers and waters and spaces and hi she's right there with her hand on my back because i mentioned her um he he oof, energy all the way up um and so i've done a number of healing rituals in water with her and like release and allowing my body and giving my body the permission to let go of that stress now like we don't need to hold on to that now it's gone we've we've moved from where it's going to directly affect us so we can heal past it we can allow it to flow out um, and allow that pain that physical pain to leave us which leaves the body feeling stronger um, leaves the spiritual self feeling stronger and you feel more like yourself now something else has been the celebration of freedom now freedom's kind of a dual-edged sword hello um i was gonna wear my new wig but i decided not to um something else is yeah freedom so freedom can be like this double-edged sword um because on the one hand you're then responsible for yourself completely now right so it's like that's scary <laughs> that's a little bit scary right there in this book hand this handbook this this thing um that's happening but on the other hand it's incredibly liberating that you just don't have to uh be responsible for anybody else's bullshit anymore you don't have to hear it you don't have to listen to it you don't have to let the camera go fuzzy with your witchcraft you don't have to deal with it you don't have to apologize to on the behalf of someone else anymore it is so liberating to not have to be held to account for somebody else's bullshit anymore you only person that you are responsible for once you're free is yourself i mean that's going to be different from for different people obviously you know if you've got kids and things it's completely different um but in my circumstance at least the only person that i am now accountable for is me and i can live to my highest truth without having that threatened i actually found a journal that had come with me and the journal I like was just flicking through it and I was like, geez. Um, and I read something and it was like, my, my sense of honor and my sense of authenticity are constantly under threat living here. And I had told myself across, you know, in words that my sense of self was under constant attack in terms of honor, in terms of authenticity of, of watching somebody else. Um, and the, standards their ethics the the business ethics or lack thereof and there's something incredibly healing in just being responsible for your own because you know that you can hold yourself to the standard that is good and right for you if you're doing it right so that was really empowering and really bringing that back in and what i did is i took that into a spiritual space as well so if you follow me on instagram highly recommend instagram because that's like my favorite it's my favorite. It's my favorite. Oh. I meant my YouTube channel, Chaotic This and That Helped Me Heal. Um, sometimes the question healing. Yeah. Okay. Um, but what I have done as of yesterday on the Instagram, if you have seen, if you're on the Instagram, on the Instagram, I don't know what this is, but you're getting it anyway, is my abundance mini altar. Um, and that is a mini altar, which is um, a permanent-ish fixture. It is on the floor. So Daisy's like, nudge and nudge. And I'm like, honey bunnies, this is not for nudging. And she's like, it's not for nudging, nudge, nudge. And I'm like, okay, fine, nudge it. And then she's like, you, you gave me permission, off I go. And I'm like, ha ha, cat logic. Anyway, um, the mini abundance altar is there and it's very much the pinnacle of giving myself a spiritual space in which to draw in abundance because I can be my truest, highest, most authentic spiritual self with regards to my creatrix life now. I am still catching up, but um, it really matters to me. It's always really mattered to me. And now I can have a physical space, um, bringing in that spiritual energy, bringing in that good juju, bringing in that abundance, bringing in that wealth, and to be able to support self as well. It's really um, basically just giving it a physical 
manifestation-y element to it, if that makes sense. It's like, I can do this, I got this, it's already feeling much more abundant, the energy is flowing much more. Um, I've had some really good news with regards to work, I can't really reveal it yet to too many people, but it's great, it's so exciting. It's a do, 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 I was so excited and it's all mine. It's my work, my successes, and I'm mm, feeling it. So I have a little mini abundance holder and that is helping me through the process of healing. And you're like, Joey, that's wealth magic. That's necessarily healing, blah, blah, blah. But when you've been drained of all your resources for so long and you're like guarding your money to make sure... Um, unpaid bills that have not been paid for forever you can cover them if needs be um it's liberating it's another sense of freedom and healing so that's definitely something else that you can do and then i think the biggest thing for me has been living authentically in truth um as well as learning to celebrate the self in ways that are not um, inauthentic, ostentatious, um, or fake really. So something that has really, really driven home to me in this process of healing, like I said, we don't have to apologize to, to people for not being fully present while we're healing, um, not giving people explanations as to how we choose to heal, but also kind of like a little bit of, of self woo self, like cheerleading, but it's definitely sometimes quieter than that, stronger than that, more warrior-like than that. Um, there's more grace than having to be in people's faces with how fine you are, because it's okay not to be fine. It's okay not to be great. It's okay to really feel these things. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to have good days, bad days, etc. And to put on a, a, a fake mask, which I don't like the idea of the fake mask, but um, and to like plaster everywhere that you're fine, is trying to draw attention to the fact that you're fine when, well, basically you're not because you're trying to sell something. It's it's uh, snake oil, basically. If someone is driving something down your throat, how true something is, you know, it's not true. Like you don't need to scream and shout and, and flaunt everything from the rooftops as being true if it is just true because creating a, a appearance of something, a glamour of something isn't the truth. It's just not. Um, whereas when you're living authentically for your truest self, that just shines through. You don't need to explain it. Um, and that has been very, very powerful in the process of healing and the process of taking power back. Um, remembering that we can have conversations, we can stand up for ourselves. We can, um, really believe what it is that we are and are being in the world without having to make a song and dance about it to make out that something that's not true is true. That has been really empowering for me, really empowering for me. Um, and, and really taking that back and, and like believe that quiet, persistent, resilient belief in self has been far more powerful than any flash in the pan anything would be. Um, and being deep rooted with that belief that you deserve better than you have had and we are going to better places than we have been has kept me through and kept me fueled and kept me growing and i think for most of us people who have normal healthy relationships of self um we want to be better we don't want to go back um we don't want to become less we don't want to regress back into something that we used to be for most of us we want to become more right we want to grow into who we're going to be next we want to become more empowered we want to become more true we want to be the best version of ourselves basically which is something i've been um looking at time and time again this situation really did it was painful for me in one second because it made me look at who i was um a year or two ago and whether or not i had been as um awful as the behavior against me is now. Um, and whereas I was never malicious, um, there are situations where I had unwittingly been made a participant of things, which had I known never in a million years, but I kind of had to look at that and I kind of had to own that for myself. So I kind of owned the, the fact that way back before 
I was engaged in something which hurt other people. Now, it's not that I wanted to maliciously hurt anybody else. I don't. And I've apologized to the people who I've hurt before this point, by the way. I've had conversations with people that I've hurt all of them. Um, and I never wanted to be somebody who harmed others and created an image of self. I never wanted to degrade others to make myself look better. That was never my intention, but I had, I was looking back at the energy of a year ago to see if I had gotten into that place somewhat unwittingly. Um, now, like I said, I have never maliciously wanted to like create a video and like, um, laugh at other people's expense or uh look at me look 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 and you don't nya, 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 none of that i don't it, it gives me the heebie-jeebies honestly it makes my soul feel really uncomfortable and it kind of speaks of insecurity to be that way anyway um but i did have a good hard look at whether or not i had become that person a year ago now the way that I sit with it is that I didn't become that pe that person. I was definitely not out to harm other people, exes, whatever. I wasn't m being malicious about it. But at the same time, I can be better going forward. I can be aware of that going forward and never get into any relationships with narcissists ever again. I can make sure that I listen to other people the words of women basically it's, it's there's men too but it was largely my lesson this time was definitely listen to the words and the pain of women who are trying to tell you that they've been there and this is their pain and this is what's happened to them um because there was a lot of this cloud of funk about making out that these many women were liars um and they were all mad they were all insane, right? All of them, um, which is a, a surefire giveaway that the they're not, you know, like it's it's been really interesting how using mental health against women has been the, the thread through. It's like, actually, no, you just tried to sort to disempower them. You sought to abuse them. You sought to cheat. You sought to lie. You drove them to the point of where they were feeling and acting out because they were being gaslit all the time or they were being cheated on or whatever it is. Um, so it really has driven home lessons of allow people to speak, allow people to um, tell you their truths. Um, yeah, it's classical cheating stuff to make out that it's entirely the woman and the woman did this and the woman did that. I mean, I I woke up in the middle of the night hearing myself being slagged off to uh, less than pleasant people on the Internet. Like that's something that happened to me that I woke up in the middle of the night and could hear the lies being told about myself. Um, so when it comes to healing me and my relationships around myself, it was a good shadow lesson of you don't have to excuse everybody else's behavior, but you can recognize their pain and you can recognize that it's very unlikely that they're making everything up in those circumstances. And it's, the truth is usually somewhere in the middle, usually. Um, but in this case, in my case, I'm more of the opinion now that I was constantly lied to about everything. So that's most likely a lie. So that has been something, a big lesson for me, which is being listening to the pain and wounds of other women. Now that's, it's not so much empowerment of, of me, but it's definitely empowerment of community, which is kind of like the final thing that we're going to just touch on before we uh, end the video because we're at 30 minutes already because I just managed to yak. Woo. Um, <laughs> so the community, as I said, on many videos, on many blog posts, you know, they have blown me away. I'm actually going to find, I'm actually going to find the thing I wrote because this was cool. This, this kind of embodied how I felt and it was a gratitude thing. Uno momento, everybody. Hang on. And we Instagram. Are you on the thing? And this is the fashion. Oh, no. By the way, Curly has a new album coming out. Who's excited? I'm excited. Right. So this is kind of how I, I, I said for the community. I am grateful for the army at my back who stood by me, heard me and helped me recognizing the truth in my struggle and the pain and distress I was under. 
I'm grateful to, for those who have shared their story since letting me know I'm by no means the only one. I'm grateful for the lesson that I never want to be the person who doesn't care who they hurt or seeks to humiliate and harm others on purpose. I am grateful for the knowledge that I do not need another person to be whole or to be powerful. Maybe that's what we should, should round this up with. I think that's really important. Um, we don't need someone else to be whole, to make us someone. And this is, I mean, I've always kind of been myself. I don't think that I wittingly thought that I would become more by being with someone else or become a voice or become famous or something. Um, and there are very few things that I took um, from that situation which have been positive. I had the door open to Bog for me, kind of, but I was that door was open for me because of my work, the way I presented myself and the way I've worked since. So that's about the only thing that I have taken from any of it, apart from Daisy, of course, who was worth the entire ordeal. Um, but it really is a healing thing to realize that you do not need another person to be complete. And I know that we see these memes and we're like, yeah, yeah, we agree. We agree. We agree with that. But really knowing it in your heart and soul is an entirely different thing. It is a lifetime process. It's a long journey. It's complicated. It's difficult, especially if you've been through um, a difficult experience growing up or you've been through some kind of abuse it can be very very difficult to feel enough in and of yourself and feel whole and I think that's the wound that let let the, the predator in basically for, for me is that I didn't feel enough um, but I wasn't weak enough to the point where I could be completely drained and completely used either um, but there's something deeply healing in that process in remembering that you're enough. And I'm going to finish with this quote by Nicole Lyons um, or Leons, uh, which has been truly, truly powerful for me. Um, and it kind of sums up everything how I'm feeling right now. So here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Say so hanging on the edge of your seats. Not after 30 minutes. You're not, you're like, shut up, Jerry. We've had enough. Right. Anyway, <laughs> I have licked to the fire and danced in the ashes of every bridge I ever burned. I fear no hell from you. And that's who we need to be, brothers and sisters. We're not afraid. We're not going to be defined by someone else. We're not going to be humiliated by someone else. We're, we're going to be here. And I really liked the song by Pink this morning, which was like, there ain't enough tape in the world to shut me up. There ain't enough rope to bind me and hold me down. And I said this to someone else, actually. This was about their situation, not mine. Um, they had shared body positive stuff of themselves and people had come after them and called them names and all the rest of it. And I was like, do it more. If this is what empowers you, do it more. Thank you guys for joining me on um, your guys' Thanksgiving. I completely spaced because it's not a thing here. Um, I hope you guys have a good holiday. I love you all for joining me. Thank you so, so much. Um, may we all heal and empower together. Many blessings. <laughs>